Well, possibly the match of the opening round was that down at Glenelg between two of last year's top teams, Glenelg and Port Adelaide. Last year, Port did slightly the better of the two. At least they made the grand final. Though of course, they were beaten by Norwood. But today it was Glenelg who started favourite. They'd recently beaten the Magpies by 11 goals in the Escort Cup consolation. And in addition to that, Port were without key players Tim Evans and Martin Leslie. Well, our highlights from the Bay begin from the opening bounce with commentators Roger Wills and Daryl Hicks. Bright sunny conditions at Glenelg, a big crowd for the match of the round between Glenelg and Port Adelaide. Kerry wins the tap. First free kick has been taken by Walsh. Glenelg going to the northern end of the Glenelg Oval. Almost to mark to Kernahan. Comes to McDermott. Comes off the head of uh, Gill. Strong tackle by McGuinness. Umpire says play on. And a one away come the Magpies through Owens. Russell gets it free to Bradley. It's the edge of the square. Squares it across. The player coming down the ground is Craig Ebert. But it's Russell Ebert playing his 433rd Australian record game. It's gone short. And good teamwork by the Magpies. And the mark is taken at centre-half forward by Stephen Williams. Very surprising to see Stephen Williams on the track for Port Adelaide played in the Collingwood trials in the back pocket back with Port Adelaide shooting for goal about 50 metres out from goal not a bad looking kick from Williams it's the opening score for the Magpies that's what they want they lead by six points and we've just been playing about 30 seconds Kerry favoured by the bounce but uh, Russell came in and we've got the first altercation of the match still on it was expected there would be some fire in the match but we've got a bushfire at the moment 90 seconds into the game the bigger men are there flanked by the, the smaller men Henwood was strong being spoken to by umpire Laurie Argent and Bradley about to put Port Adelaide forward so the big crowd primed by a 53-goal game in the reserves. And the arch-rivals carries behind. Comes to Harrison. Too high the ruling, and Phil Harrison's got the free kick. About 20 metres out from goal. Courageous decision, umpire Schofield. Port Adelaide shooting for their second. The crowd anxiously awaited that decision by the umpire. Distance won't be a problem for Phil Harrison. Any direction. Can he make it two in a row for the Magpies? I think he has. We've been playing two minutes in the first term and the Magpies lead by 12 points. Well, a lot of enthusiasm by both sides. Bradley leading, Marshall chasing. Bradley from behind flies too much. Clever football by David Kernahan. He's down from his wing. He's left half forward. See the goals there in the distance and perfect conditions. And a big crowd here at Glenelg Oval. A long-looking kick from David Kernahan. Brilliant. Tapping by his brother Stephen Kernahan. The opening goal for the Magpies. They trail by five points. We played five and a half minutes first term. Curtis takes the kick in this time. He's looking for Anderson, who's got two opponents. Carey knocks it down. Johnston slow to move. Owens is under pressure from Simons and does it cleverly, Brenton Owens, playing with great confidence this season. Back to the centre of the ground, but the mark chipping in is Walsh. Walsh in the centre of the Grinnell Gable. Going long, quick movement for Copping and Kernahan. Punch coming from the Magpies, picked up by Alan Stringer. He's going to kick a goal this time. Alan Stringer kicks a goal, and the Tigers lead by four points, leading for the first time in the match. We've played 12 minutes, first term. Kerry and Johnston. Kerry attempts to grab himself. Gets it out to Alan Stringer. Is at number two? It's offline. And the Tigers trail by one point. Henwood just a little croppy as he walks with Dwayne Russell. May have taken a thigh injury. Johnston's the target. The Tigers have the numbers. Simons loves to run. He's gone to half forward. He'll have a bounce. He might even kick a goal. He comes into centre half forward. Can he get away from his opponent? He chips it over his shoulder. That's a magnificent individual goal. Inspirational football by Simons. And the Tigers lead by five points, 19 minutes into the first term. A seesawing first term, and now the 
Tigers lead by five points. Geneva gets the ball forward for Port Adelaide. It eludes Russell. The player driven into the ground by Gibbs. Play on is the call. Russell gives it to Bradley. Bradley wants to hand pass. Geneva might bring up his second goal. He stabs from a standing start and he's put it through and I think the Magpies are back in front. They are by one point and we've played 20 minutes in the first term. The centre half forward from a standing start. It's gone over the hands. Curtis. Pushed out by Seabame's clever football. McDermott gets boot to ball. Team play. That's Simpson driving back to the centre of the ground. Punched away from Russell by Henwood. Piacci is taking his time. Gets it back to Lawson. Lawson a hand pass to Ginner, who's been everything in the first term. Although that comes off Gibbs. Knock on by Lawson. Finds Bradley. Bradley at centre half forward can kick a football. And I think he's kicked the goal. Oh, great play by the Magpie centre man. And they lead by seven points after 21 minutes. Kernahan wins the tap. Goes across to Marshall. To Simons. A great duel all day will be between Anderson and Simons. They've got the numbers. This is the Tigers. Player with the eyes on the ball is Walsh. It goes from McGuinness across to a teammate who stabs away at goal. And he's just offline. Does he know it's a goal? An absorbing game in the first quarter. The crowd loving every second. Anderson it hasn't gone very far in distance, but it's gone high. Simons, Anderson's opponent, whips it back over his shoulder, but he'll find Bradley. Bradley been dominant in the first turn, puts it to centre half forward. Gibbs looked to be held. Is he taking the mark? Umpire says play on. And the free kick will go to Craig Ebert. Up quickly. The one out situation for Duthie and Johnston. Johnston's behind. Can he kick it off the ground? And on the goal umpire. He has. And it's back to a 14 point margin as Russell Johnston kicks the goal for Port Adelaide. 25 and a half minutes first term. One minute gone in the second term. Kerry and Baker, fairly indecisive, although Kerry takes the crumbs. Piachi hand passes to Lawson. Lawson on the left foot, just out of the reach of Walsh for the Tigers. Too high for Owens, he'll take the free kick. Free kick had already been awarded. Yes, it's a bit unfortunate, but the decision was correct. Johnston. Tigers have the numbers, Gibbs kicks it away, but he'll only find Lawson. Lawson steadies. Didn't really look at the goal, but he's put it right through, has he? Still in play. Williams gives himself time. He's close to the boundary line. Hand pass to Harrison, and Harrison has kicked the goal. And that is absolutely brilliant football by Williams. And the Port Adelaide side have started well. They lead by 23 points, two minutes into the second quarter. Duthie's kick out. Once again on the ground, that's Lawson across to Russell, shouldn't miss this time, he hasn't. They've been working hard for that goal and they lead by 32 points, seven and a half minutes second term. The ball fisted to ground, two Bay players in the air. A lot of speed by Port Adelaide as they've picked up, setting the play up for Russell. He's not marked anywhere near closely enough now by Seacamp and it was an easy goal. So Port Adelaide 9963, Glenelg 4731. Cut one by Stephen Kernahan. Handball by Bradley. He'll only find the Tigers taking it to half forward. It was meant for Copping. It's made awkward for him. His opponent there is uh, Smith. They keep it in, or Copping does. Wants to hand pass, does to Alan Stringer. Must hand pass. Can he get back in time? McGuinness he can, and they pick the goal. That's their fifth goal, and it's much needed. And they trail now by 26 points. And we've played eight and a half minutes, second term. Now Johnston's turn against Stephen Kernahan. One by the Magpie, two. Picked up by Owens. Owens drives long. Plenty of knocking from the Glenelg defenders. They've got the numbers at the moment. That's Wayne Stringer. It's the lead from David Kernahan, a long way down from the wing. He's marked half back, out of side. Back to his position on the outer side. Alan Stringer to Stephen Kernahan. They're trying to create. That's big Wayne Henwood. Goes short for McGuinness. That's clever football, deceptive football. And he's marked about 13 metres out. Well, someone with the length of kick of Henwood would have been expected to shoot. Perhaps he didn't uh, have the confidence in his accuracy being a defender, so he set it up from Tony McGuinness, and we know McGuinness is an accurate kick.
Tony McGuinness kicks his second for the turn. And the Tigers trail by 20 points halfway through the second quarter. Kernahan favoured by the bounce. Gives it to McDermott. Tigers go forward again. Smith gets himself in front. Oh, good harm pass to Curtis. Combination again. That's uh, Geneva at centre-half back. They're taking their time. The player putting himself ruthlessly there is Kidney. The bump from McDermott. It's paid off. It comes to Stringer to McDermott. Knocked on by the Tigers. The race is for the goal square. It's still in play. Oh, clever football by Ben Harris. Simons. Eyes on the football. Gives it to Marshall. Marshall is a fine kick of the football. It's going to be very close. It's a goal. And that is brilliant football by the Tigers. Who are really roaring back at the moment. And they trail by 14 points. We've played 15 minutes second term. And he'll be kicking out. So 12 points is the margin. We've played 21 minutes in the second quarter. Bradley, been quiet in the second term. The Magpies have the numbers now. And football by Craig Ebert. Across to Anderson. Onto his favoured left foot. Down towards the forward pocket. And the markers, I think, has been paid by the umpire. The mark has been paid to the limping Russell Ebert. Well, there have been one or two decisions that could swing this game in the Port Adelaide forward line. Ebert got up limping. And Duthie infringed. Russell Ebert playing the Australian record game of 433rd senior games. Puts it right through the middle. And what more could the captain coach do in the situation? They lead by 18 points. And look at Russell Ebert. First played for Port Adelaide in 1968. And he'd be pretty pleased at this stage. They lead by three goals, 22 minutes in the second term. Johnston, the shark by Walsh. It's gone to the outer side. Seabone has the eyes on the football. So does Alan Stringer. McGuinness back to Seabome. He drives long. Copping. The Tigers have the numbers on the ground. Kidney can he get boot to ball? Hand passes to Henwood. And Henwood's put it through. And he's taken the roof off the grandstand here at Glenelg. As the deficit now is five points. 29 and a half minutes in the second term. Well played, Robin King. Wayne String is lifted. Gave the ball to Tony McGuinness, and this is how Glenelg have set up their movements in this latter part of the quarter. Kernahan with confidence, sidestepped. It looked as if Copping was perfectly placed. He got both hands to the ball, but couldn't quite bring it to ground. Kidney, shall I, shan't I? Whoops, to Henwood for the snap. Start of the third quarter of Glenelg Oval, and Port Adelaide lead by 11 points. Port Adelaide will be kicking to the southern end of the ground, and that's where they go. A long kick through Owens, up for Russell Ebert. The punch coming from Duthie. Port Adelaide have the man on the ground. That's Stephen Williams. Strong tackle by Russell Gibbs. I thought he'd indicated uh, in possession, but in fact the free kick goes to Stephen Williams. And what a great start for the Magpies if he can uh, kick a goal. He's been an enthusiastic player marred his performance by inaccurate kicking but a very aggressive attack of the ball already kicked two goals as stephen williams and that's his third and what a start for the magpies craig bradley playing well down to stephen williams and that's just the start the magpies want they now lead by 17 points and we haven't played a minute in the third quarter port adelaide in the league lanelg in the attack kernahan well played by Johnson. Good use of the body. Geneva spears the hand pass to Anderson. Goes back to the wing. Almost a great mark to Harrison. It came to Bradley. Did it go 10 metres? It must have. Came to Hewitt. Marshall. Marshall winds up. It's a wobbly old kick. This will give Anderson a chance. And he's marked at half back out of side. Surprising kick from David Marshall. Usually a perfect torpedo. Long lead from Russell. He drops it. Picked up by Geneva. That's clever football. Comes to... Craig Ebert spears it for brother Russell. Where are the crumbs going to go? Russell Ebert goes to ground. Kicked off the ground by a Tiger. And they've got the numbers down. They must be shepherding here for McDermott. McDermott will hand pass across to Alan Stringer. Running down the ground from the wing is Kernahan. He'll have a look at the goals. He's gone long and kicked a brilliant goal over to Kernahan. A much needed goal for the Magpies. And they trail by nine points. And we've played six minutes in the third quarter.
McDermott out of the centre for the Tigers. Punch came from Simpson, but it went the wrong way for him. It's gone to McGuinness, and look at the pace of the McGarry medalist. He has an open look at the goals. Kernahan's there. It's punched away from him. The Tigers have got a chance. Kernahan should have shepherded. It must be in the back is the ruling. And it is a free kick to the Tigers. And that's Stephen Copping. Is it 15 metres? No. Well, they're not looking good when Copping and Kernahan are given the chance where the ball comes in quickly. Kernahan needing to be one out with his opponent to take the mark. Copping to read the offhand. Stephen Copping yet to kick a goal. The acutest of angles. And it looks pretty good. What a one to kick for your first goal. And they lead by 22 points, 22 minutes into the third term. Johnson. Bradley gives it to his teammate in Williams. Across to Anderson. Knocked away cleverly by Kernahan. He gets to centre half forward. He's put it long and he's put it right through the middle. And the Tigers can do no wrong at the 23 minute mark of the third term. He's kicked three goals, David Kernahan, from the wing. And the margin is now 28 points in favour of Grinnell. A long run from Henwood. He comes to Ebert to the grandstand wing for Russell. Good drop punt from Russell. Almost a sensational mark by Gibbs. He loves the fly. He's going to come away with a football. Stop. Back to uh, Marshall. goes back to Knight, Bobble I do, kick it says even, and he's put it across to Biachi, he'll give it to Russell Eben, he'll kick a goal, and the Grinnell supporters won't like that at all, they'll go back to the tackle on the grandstand wing, but the margin now to uh, Glenelg is 22 points. The Glenelg little men swarming at their opposition. Carey gets the call, dived on by Copping, Alan Stringer, Stephen Kernahan, he lines up, it's going to be close. It's a goal to Stephen Carnahan. And he goes to Alan Stringer. And well he might because he's played a grand supportive role as the half-forward flanker for the Tigers. And they go back to a lead of 28 points. And we're well into time on third term. Well, the quick reflex hand pass from Alan Stringer set up the play and gave Carnahan just the time he needed to kick the goal. Carey to Simons, blocks the hand pass, clever football and gives it to Stringer, Shepard by McGuinness is a fine one, he whips it across just out from the goal square, Copping has to wait, there's Kidney, Kidney into an open goal, and the Tigers get the opening goal in the final turn, lead by 45 points. Henwood from behind from Johnston, Simons who's a light in the final turn, he's chased by Simpson, Centre half forward, Copping a long lead, and a grand mark by Stephen Copping. Got all over the nose after running into the fence. Gives it to Kernahan, favoured by the bounce. Whips it over his shoulder, no one's at home for the Magpies. It's gone right through for the goal, their second of the turn. And they lead by 51 points, and Stephen Kernahan's kicked three goals. Harrison ducks his head, gets it to Ginova. The lead, strong mark, taken by Knight. Knight to the centre of the ground, but no one there in black and white. Carey winds up, he drops it. He always seems to get out of trouble somehow. Vernell captain across to Marshall. And the race is on for David Kernahan. He'll get shepherding from Copping. He's got time. Chased by Anderson. Gives it across to his teammate. And the teammate lines up and has put it through a goal. Wayne Stringer. Down from the half-back flank. Superbly placed. The long penetrating kick. Well, David Kernahan won the race for the ball, and in centering the ball, found Wayne Stringer on the drift down from the halfback flank. He didn't believe his luck and set up the shot for his first goal. 12 minutes into the final term, and Glenelg lead by 54 points. Jennifer out to the outer wing. 
David Kernahan wants the free kick. It's with Bradley. He looks into the sun. The player behind is Knight. Can he pick it up in time? He's caught. Strong tackle by Wayne Stringer. Over the shoulder from Stephen Williams. He's kicked a goal. And Stephen Williams has kicked four goals, one in every term. And Gamal lead by 48 points, 12 minutes into the final term. Craig Bradley put the ball forward quickly. Never giving in Bradley Knight, who's been an improved player in the second half. A little bit slow, however, under pressure. Williams decided to not give the hand pass, and he snapped the right foot shot. It's Gavin Walsh at half back. Henwood couldn't wind up, but within five metres, Simpson has blocked him out, and Wayne Henwood takes the free kick. And obviously, he's going to be a useful player, very experienced and versatile. Kernahan. Grand mark by Stephen Kernahan. Despite the attention from Ben Harris, he's at half forward. He's looking for Copping, who waits. Copping! <laughs> and don't the Glenelg supporters love the skills of Kernahan and Copping? He's kicked three goals in the second half, Stephen Copping. And the bruise around the nose from running in the fence be hurting too much at the moment. He's 20 metres out from goal. He's kicked his fourth goal. And Glenelg lead by 71 points. 21 minutes final term. The centre square infringement. This time it's gone to uh, Glenelg. Russell Ebert kicks it to half forward. Mark taken by Dwayne Russell. torpedo punt from Dwayne Russell and the mark has been taken by Russell Gibbs the man in front and he's played a fine hand in the back pocket loves to go for the big mark and has taken some rippers today that time he flew unattended put onto the ground comes out to Simons he's had a dynamic final quarter lead from McGuinness plays on quickly Kernahan and Cobbing, what pressure on the Magpies. Was there a push? No. Down on the ground is Cobbing, and he's kicked a goal, a brilliant goal. What versatile football from Stephen Cobbing. Congratulated by Tony McGuinness and Alan Stringer. And the lead is an amazing 77 points as Cobbing's kicked five goals. Henwood's gone back towards half-back. Barrett's there. Gives it to Wayne Stringer. He's had an excellent final quarter also. Knocked over the back. That's Alan Stringer. Ball comes out to David Kernahan. He runs to half-forward. Looks for Copping. Copping's in front this time. Punched back by Harris. McGuinness is there. McGuinness whips it over his shoulder. Is it another goal? It is, I think. They can do no wrong. And they lead by 83 points as McGuinness kicks his sixth goal. play for the key position player there's no pressure across the center now from Port Adelaide spoiled by Smith McGuinness in top form took one-handed spun impossible position such confidence and such accuracy to register his sixth big punch from Johnston he finds Knight it's the one-out situation up on the goal square a big punch coming from Duthie Oh, clever football by Williams. Snaps away and it's going to be close. In fact, that's a brilliant goal by Stephen Williams. And he's kicked five goals, Stephen Williams. And we're back to 77 points in favour of Glenelg. Almost in the time on final turn. Well, Port Adelaide's never defeated, but that was a, a beautiful spoil by Duthie. He's very close to his opponents all day. Stephen Williams, confidence, the sidestep. Not a lot of options open to him, so he blasted away, and that's not probably not unfair, not fair, and kicked the goal.
Just 11 points in front at half time, but 11 goals in each of the third and last quarters gave Glenelg that 88 point win over Port Adelaide. McGuinness kicked six goals, Copping five, Stephen Kernahan and David Kernahan both four, and David, David Kernahan, the best of the uh, Tigers, also Gibbs, Copping, McGuinness. Four, Port Adelaide, Williams five, Ginevra three, Ginevra, Ginevra the best player, followed by Russell, Owens, and Smith. Well, a great performance by Glenelg down at the bay and what a welcome home present it was too for coach Graham Corns, who of course was at South Adelaide last year. After the match, he spoke with Roger Wills. Graham, to beat Port Adelaide in the opening round of a season, but to beat them by 88 points, see your wildest dreams? Oh, it's happy to win, you know, really a win's a win, whether it's 88 points or one point. Sometimes those one point victories are a little bit sweeter, but particularly uh, in view of how the game was going in the second quarter, to to have kicked 22 goals in the last quarter, I thought it was a very, very good effort. But it's the trouble, it is only the opening game of the season, it's not the, the last game of the season. What did you say to them at half-time? As you mentioned, they had to work pretty hard in the first half. What did you say at the long break? Well, they, they were working hard, but you know, Port Adelaide were just doing it a little bit better than we were, and they were doing all the, sort of, all the things that we had asked our players to do, but there was no dramatics, it was just a matter of our game wasn't bad, Port Adelaide were playing well and weren't letting us get our game running, so I really just asked them to persevere and have a look at the effort that had put Port Adelaide in front and uh, try and emulate that. You beat them by 65 points in the playoff on the Escort Cup final. Did that make it awkward uh, leading up to this match? Well, I, I think it made it a little bit harder. I, I'm sure if, it, you know, if I was a Port Adelaide player, it would have given me a lot of, uh, a lot of incentive, and if I was the coach, I would have been playing that last quarter of the Escort Cup over and over again to try and work out just where we did get the run from to kick 10 goals in the quarter. So I really was concerned, but I thought if our players played up to expectations, it wouldn't have matter what sort of motivation they had, we, we still could have been good enough. I mean, we were, we were a little bit fortunate when you consider they lost Tim Evans and they had uh, Martin Leslie out. That's the luck of the break in our favour today. So, uh, you know, I'm not getting carried away with it. It does appear that apart from having a very even team, you've got plenty of versatility to play with. Well, I like to think you can be versatile. I think there's no, no point one player just being able to play one position because if he's not playing well, you haven't got the option of moving him around. And with Seabohm and Henwood, Henwood and Kernahan and players like that, you've got the option of being able to move them around and it worked out a bit better. Because we started Henwood at centre-half back and he played very, very well at centre-half forward for us. So, uh, it does help if you've got versatile players. Well, congratulations, Graham. Such a big winning margin. Does this mean uh, you won't be back on the field this year? Oh, look, I don't know. <laughs> Everybody asks me that. As the, as the season gets into it, uh, more into the season proper, I, uh, I find it uh, more and more difficult to believe that I will actually play again. But I still have a lot of difficulty coming to grips with the fact that I've got to retire. So look at the ground and look at the grandstand and look at the Glenelg Guernsey. And you think, gee, I'd like just perhaps one more. But, you know, I got a few good players to put out of the team before I got back in, I guess. Smiling uh, Graham Corns, and I guess he'll smile when he sees the Premiership table too. Glenelg on top from North, Norwood, Torrance and Woodville, all with one win apiece after the first round of fixtures. And I wonder how long West Adelaide and Port will remain down there. Leading goal kickers after the first round, Dietrich of North kicks seven.